Hello everyone. Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, if you are stopping by here on my channel for the very first time to watch my video or you have watched my videos, I just want to say welcome to my motivational and inspirational atmosphere. My name is Claire and please do me a favor. Please just click on the red button, the subscription button and subscribe to this channel and be a part of what is going on here and also click on the notification bell so that you can receive notifications from me anytime i'm on or anytime i upload a video and for those of you that are already subscribers i just want to say a big thank you to you please keep supporting me here and keep being a part of what is going on here okay before i start um, because today I actually came out here to do something different and um, I am actually here today to share a life-changing experience and encounter um, that changed my life for the best. I am out here today to share my story um, of why I am so passionate about the things that I am doing here. Um, but before I do that, I just want to thank God and to say all the glory to him because it has been God all the way. It is God who has brought me this far. So I don't take his grace for granted. I mean, his grace in my life, I don't take it for granted. So I thank God for bringing me this far. And, um, you know, why am I sharing this story today? Um, it's because... Most times people don't understand our journey. They don't understand where we are coming from. And they don't understand the reason why we are so passionate about the things that we do. Um, they don't understand, you know, what drives us into doing what we do or what we are doing. So today I'm actually here to talk about an experience that happened you know at my um, teenage age and um, actually it happened when I was 16 years old and that was in the year 1989 and um, um, it's actually something that happened and transformed my life for the best I would say um, it transformed my life for the best because I did not regret that experience and I did not regret, you know, going into what I went into then. So today I'm going to share this life-changing experience with someone out there because I want you to be a part of what God is doing here. I want someone to understand the reason for my passion, the reason why I am out to reach out to people the reason why i am out here to touch lives with the word of god so like i said um it's something that happened way back you know some decades ago when i was just 16 years old i was a young girl and that was the age you know when every young girl wanted to explore so um i don't know why god had to you know, pick me up at that very young age, you know, but now it's clear and um, that's why I'm sharing it today with someone, this experience that changed my life for, for the best and I mean, it was really a life-changing experience. So I will take you back to my teenage age. So it all happened in the year 1989. I was in secondary school and it was an all um, girls school, meaning it was only for girls. And um, I was an in residence, you know, I was residing in the school premises because um, it was a, a school for girls, only girls, like I said. And uh, we had, then we, we, we said, the borders you know and the non-borders so i was a border border means people who reside in the school premises and have all the you know um educational activities you know centered around the school premises everything we do 
uh, I mean, everything we did then, our lives, you know, was just centered around the school premises. So um, it happened, you know, after a particular vacation, because it's only when we have our ho holidays, our vacation, we go back home to our parents and when school resumes, we come back again to the dormitory. We called it then the dormitory. And um, we had hostels, you know, where we resided. So um, when we came back after that vacation, you know, um, there was this particular girl. Her name is Chimwe, but her son name I cannot remember anymore. But I still remember her first name, you know. And I can talk about the story of my life without talking about Chimwe. And I hope she will someday bump into my video and this particular video and have a reason to be grateful to God because God actually used her to turn my life around. Why? Because uh, there are people that God connects you to or people that God brings into your life for the purpose of change and for the purpose of, you know, transformation. So um, God actually used Chimwe to touch my life to transform my life because that was the experience or the encounter I will call it an encounter that changed my life forever and that is why I'm who I am today and that's the reason why I do the things that I do today so because I want people out there to understand where I'm coming from so um, when we came back that you know um, after the vacation she started talking about the lord jesus she actually took us to um, a particular hostel and we were behind the hostel and then she started sharing with us you know the love of god and then the passions of christ and you know how god loves us and how god wants us to be saved and you know she was just talking about um, salvation and then um, you know she wanted us to be saved and um while she was talking you know what really um moved me was the fact that i was just seeing jesus on the cross and i, I was just seeing all he had to go through because of me and because of the world you know because the bible says for god so loved the world that he gave his only son jesus you know so and I was just thinking about what happened on that cross and all he had to go through because of me and because of the world, you know, just for the world to be saved, just for us to be saved, you know. So, um, as I was just thinking about that, you know, I was like, if he could do this for me, if he could do this for the whole world, then I owe him everything. I owe him my life and I owe him every breath that I breathe and then... Um, you know, I was just overwhelmed and I was crying and the tears were just dropping. And at that young age, <laughs> I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ and I received, you know, the gift of salvation. So from that moment, you know, onwards, I became a child of God and I was involved, you know, in the things of God. And I am still in the kingdom. So since then, you know, I have been in the faith. I am not trying to say that I've not had some ups and downs and I am not trying to say that it's been a, a very smooth journey, no. But one thing is sure that God, you know, takes you out from somewhere, you know, and he leads you all the way. You know, God didn't just bring me out at that young age, you know, for, for me to get stuck. You know, and because of that, you know, anytime I go through challenges or, or go through trying times, because there, there were so many times and there have been so many times, you know, um, that life has dealt me blows and I was even at the point of quitting, you know. But, but what gives me the courage to go on is um, the fact that I know that God is a good father and that God loves me unconditionally. And anytime I remember that the Christian life is a race and uh, as long as I am in this race or we are in this race, it's all about getting to the end of the track, you know, getting to the finish line. And uh, anytime I think of that, I'm like, you know, I'm going all the way, uh, you know, out there and I'm going on till I cross over you know that line and i would then know that it's over so but one thing is certain that 
I will have eternity with God. So I am actually sharing this encounter, you know, this beautiful story today because um, I want someone out there saved, you know. Um, I don't know where Chinwe is today. We don't have any contact. Our paths don't cross. I don't even know if she's still alive and she doesn't even know if I'm alive. But the truth remains that her life was changed. And I thank God for, for her life. You know that she gave to the Lord. I am also um, that she converted, and uh, I am glad because it has been from you know glory to glory. Like I said, it has not been an easy road, but God has been faithful, and you know I am still moving on. So I am out here today to reach out to someone, and uh, maybe you are out there, you don't believe, and you are procrastinating, or you are saying you know is not real you know salvation this whole thing about salvation is not real i want you to know that it's real you know and i want you to know that what jesus did on the cross of Calvary is real i want you to know that you know this whole thing about salvation it's real it's not just a story heaven is real and hell is real and you might be thinking you have the whole time here on earth Remember, no one lives here forever. Nobody stays here on earth forever. But the question is, where will you spend eternity? Are you going to spend it with God? Or are you going to spend it, you know, with the adversary, the enemy, the devil? So today, because like I said, hell is real. Heaven is real. So um, someday we will all stand before the Lord after all is said and done. But the question is, where will you spend your eternity so if you are someone and you are out there and you don't believe in jesus you don't believe in god i don't want you to procrastinate i, I am calling out to you today i am reaching out to you today because i also want you saved because i know for sure that what jesus did for us what god did for us is real the Bible says he gave us his only son, Jesus, that whosoever, John 3, 16, believes in him shall not be doomed, shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. In other words, that person will not be condemned, but that person will inherit the life of God and will spend it life eternal with God in eternity. So um, I am reaching out to someone today. And asking you to give your life to Jesus Christ because for you to be a, a, a part of this beautiful kingdom of God looking back now you know I do not um, regret my giving my life to Jesus Christ because I still remember um, as a kid you know growing up my father was a very religious type my father never joked you know with the things that had to do with God, anything that pertains to God. And I still remember how we would do our morning devotions and pray and, you know, all the time. But my father never had a personal relationship with the Lord then, you know, while I was very young. But the truth remains that my father was very religious, but he never understood, you know, what this new life in Christ is all about. He never understood stood or he never knew what it was like to have a personal relationship with the lord jesus you know until i led him to christ but that was much later on you know so um i gave my life to christ as a little girl as a, as a young teenager like i said and i don't have any regrets you know so I remember also how I, I you know after i gave my life how i was so passionate about souls how i would talk about the Lord Jesus in taxis and buses with people on the street, you know. I've had to do house-to-house -house evangelism, you know, reaching out to people. I, you know, was so drowned in this um, whole sea, you know, of reaching out to souls. And um, that's my passion. Like I, I said, I am so passionate about it because... I just want people to be saved. I don't want anyone to, you know, miss it. So that's why I am reach, reaching out to someone out there today. Maybe you, you think it's not real. 
it is real. What Jesus did is real. And heaven is real. Hell is real. So I want you to give your life to Jesus. Don't procrastinate before it's too late. Because if you don't do it now, you might end up regretting it. And it might be too late then. So why am I talking about, you know, like I'm, at a very young age, you know, I remember all my life, I used to be this reserved then. I used to be this very reserved, shy, you know, I don't talk and um, so, you know, quiet and so shy. I was the timid type, but God picked me up from somewhere and now I understand it all, you know. So, but it's not all about our self-righteousness. I will say that it's all about the grace of God. It's grace that picked me up. It's grace that took me from the miry clay and placed me where I am today. So I owe everything to God. And today I am reaching out to someone who is procrastinating. Why am I talking about procrastination now? Because there are times in our lives when we keep saying, I'll do this tomorrow or I'll do this next week i'll do this some other time and maybe you're watching me right now you are saying mm, i'll do it someday in my life i'll do it sometime later in my life but you may never know tomorrow might be too late um because there was this incident that happened you know in my um university days you know i was staying off campus and i got to know a girl you know that we were so you know uh, I, I wouldn't say you know, we were too close, but we used to rub minds anytime we see on campus. We, we, we talk, we laugh and share ideas and all that. And, um, you know, we, we were friends actually, but I didn't get to know where she was living. You know, we were just friends on campus, I'll put it that way. But outside campus, I never knew where she was staying and um, because I was staying on campus and she was residing off campus and um, I don't want to mention her name here for some reasons, you know. So we would talk, we would laugh and I could remember her, you know, telling me all the time, come visit me, come know my place, you know. And I kept procrastinating. Why am I saying it? Procrastination is not a good thing. So I kept procrastinating okay i'll come i'll come and i never went to her place but behind you know uh, um as an i was like i i knew behind um reasonable doubt that anytime i go to her place that i will share the word of god with her at the back of my mind i was always like any day i visit her i will share the word of god with her uh, because she was not sick and um I wanted her to know the Lord Jesus, but I kept procrastinating. I was waiting for the right time, but the right time never came. Why? Because she got involved in a very fatal accident that took her life. That took her life. And she left without knowing Jesus. And I felt so bad about it because... Um, Maybe God was actually trying to use me, you know, to save her before it was too late. And that was why she was always like, come know my place, come know my place. Because that would also have been an opportunity for me to reach out to her. But I kept procrastinating and I never went to see, uh, visit her until she passed on. And she passed on without receiving Jesus as Lord. And I, I feel so bad about it. And that's why no one would understand me. You know, when I say I am really passionate about leading people to Christ, about telling people about the finished work on the cross, about telling people about, you know, the love, the unconditional love of God and the grace of God that has been made available to every one of us in Christ Jesus. So that's the story. So, but when I finally knew, got to know her place was after she had passed on because those who knew her, you know, a group of us, we had to go to her place just to be sure that truly she was gone. You know, we just wanted to be sure. And when we got there, I cried and I felt so sad because I would have been there before she left. You know, I would have been to her place before she passed on. So today I urge you, if you're watching me, I ask that you give your life to Jesus Christ, receive him as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Romans 3, 23, that all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Everyone. 
So, as I was saying, you know, everyone has seen that has come short of the glory of God. So, that's what the Bible says in Romans 3.23. And also in Romans 6.23, it says, What well, the wages of sin is death, but that the free gift of God is eternal life, which is in Christ Jesus. So, for you to have eternal life, you have to be in Christ Jesus. For you to have this free gift of life, which, you know, God has made available to us all. You need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You need to believe in your heart that He is Lord and that He died and rose again. You need to confess Him as your Lord and personal Savior for you to be saved because God does not want anyone doomed. God does not want anyone, you know, condemned. He wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to spend eternity with Him, you know, in glory. So, I am actually reaching out to someone today. Maybe you're procrastinating and saying tomorrow I will do this, tomorrow I will do that, tomorrow I will accept this free gift of salvation. I am reaching out to you today, you know, because I want you saved. I actually had another message in mind, but you know, the Lord, this had been a burden in my heart for some days now. So I am actually out here to share with someone out there. You're watching me today. Jesus loves you. He died for you. He gave his life for you that you might have life. He gave his life for you so that you can, you know, end up in eternity, not doomed. He gave his life for you because he loves you passionately. He loves you beyond your, you know, human reasoning. So I also want to quickly um, read something from the Bible, the book of Romans 10 from verse 9. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It says if you will make this declaration with your mouth, if you will declare it, if you will confess it with your mouth that Jesus, you know, with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you will believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So it's all about you confessing him. It's all about you declaring that Jesus is Lord. It's just something very simple. It's just a simple prayer. You pray this prayer and you become a child of God. If we go down to 10, it says, For with the heart one believes. In other words, with your heart you believe. Unto what? Unto righteousness. That when you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and that He died and was and that He died and rose again from the dead, that you become right standing with God, you know. And it says, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So with your mouth, you confess and you become saved. In other words, you receive the salvation of your soul when you declare Jesus as Lord and Savior. And you become right standing with God when you believe in your heart that He is Lord, that He is the Savior of the world. So today, I encourage you, if you are watching me right now and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to quickly pray this simple prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I receive you into my heart and into my life as my Lord and my personal Savior. I believe today that you died and rose again from the dead for me. And I believe that you died and rose again for my justification. I receive this free gift of salvation today as I declare you Lord over my life. Dear Lord Jesus, take your rightful place in my heart. Take your rightful place in my life. I ask you to forgive my sins, all my sins. And I ask you to purify my heart. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I decree today that I am a child of God. I declare today that I am born again. I declare today that I am born of the Spirit of the Almighty God. If you said the simple prayer with me, I want you to know that God heard you and that you are now a child of God. And congratulations and welcome into this beautiful family of God. This is the encounter that I had as a very young girl. And this encounter changed my life. And that is why I stand out today. And that is why 
the kingdom of darkness can stop me. And nobody can. And nothing can separate me from the love of God. And nothing can hinder me from talking about the Lord Jesus. Because I do not regret giving my life to Christ. So I encourage you today. If you have heard, uh, uh, listened to my message and you have watched this video, you have listened to my story, I call it a story, or, you know, listen to the story of my encounter. It's just a part of it. Maybe more will be coming, you know, but for now, it's just a part of my story, the story of my life. How God took me from that little girl into the woman that I am today, a woman of faith. God bless you all. I love you. And we will surely see you again. God loves you. Bye-bye.